all right so let's start today's class today we are going to look into uh, material editor and placing lights so let's start for it so as you can see there is no light so we can't see the materials properly here and uh, if i change the visual styles to let me uncheck this aged faces so all the materials are like this available here but i can i can't see it so just because of that it is uh, currently aged faces all the ages are highlighted why is this so in normal condition the default lighting are on in the normal condition the default lighting are on but when you choose this light and uh, you go for this free light or uh, this any target light here so you have this standard light photometric light so let me go with this photometric light and here you have this free light and target light so it will ask you to go for this you are creating a photometric light it is recommended that you see you use the physical camera exposure control would you like to uh, use that exposure control so let's go for that yes let me go for that yes and now let's place some uh, target light there so let me place the target light randomly over there and uh, it is placed yeah so here it is placed okay so let me go with this move icon and there you can see that it is uh, the target okay so we will later change the target let me go with the top view and let me place this here okay and now let me move this target there okay and about the left view so let me change the position there and let me change the position here and now come to perspective so here is your light i hope you can see so it's uh, more directing towards the target it's more directly towards target okay you can make it uh, free also if you come to this uh, modify option there so this is your target light you can make it off and make it on again so if you uncheck this option it will not be targeted anymore now you see it is currently free light so when you click on this it will become targeted all right so we have this option so even if you go for target light you can make it free light and here we have this free light option and there you make it all right right click on it let me position this and here again you can make it target okay that you can make it so let me go with this free i don't need to uh, direct towards any target and uh, if you are making the target so you can make the target distance fix before that you can change the target distance and then you can go for the target and accordingly you will get it okay so you you can change this there you can or else you can select like this and you can change it and uh, now when you go for this light and there you see the target distance is changed right now and uh, about the shadows so shadows will be on for this one and this will be this uh, this one if you have any shadow map so that you can go for it area shadows that you can select okay so let me go with that now let me just place uh, some lights there okay 
so for that let me go with the top and here uh, can you see that we have placed uh, some cavity for placing lights so let me show you here here we have created all this so let me just place over there Okay, and if you come to top, there it is. You can go for default shading there, and there you can see. Right, it is created. You can uh, highlight this aged faces. So place it at the middle. And now uh, we have more options. So let me just leave it here. So about this intensity on all, we will change it later. OK, now let me just uh, create some duplicate uh, with the duplicate. Let me place more lights. So this. And place and let me go with the instance so you have the idea about instance and reference so let me go with the instance and number of copy let me place five or it will be four okay and you can change the name so here we have and for this one we have the change in position and for this to let me hold the shift button and let me place it over there and go for instance so the number of copies will be three and there you have and now let me select sorry not all this this one this one and this one and holding the shift button let me create the duplicate over there and that is done and now let me come to perspective here you can see we have all of them all the lights are there but the intensity is not right Correct. The intensity is not right. So what we have to do, we have to let me select any light as because we have created instance. So if I change uh, the parameters for only one, it will be changed for all. Now here you can see the intensity. We have this intensity. We have this color option. So let me change the intensity there. So let me go with a uh, thousand and enter. And now we can see, right? Now the colors are visible there, right? But here you see the color is coming as per this selection Kelvin. Let me select this one, okay? So this is the type of light you can say uh, you can choose halogen light. OK, so here we have some kind of. So this option is there. OK, so whatever you like, you can choose. So let me go with that. And uh, again, you can choose for filter color. Suppose you are going with this color and again you can apply for this color or any kind of uh, color here you can apply. So the color changes are visible, right? Yes, visible. Yes, OK. So for that we will have white color only. Alright, so this is 
the intensity intensity level if you want to increase you can go for increasing it right so the more uh, intensity the more clear scene will be okay but the more doesn't mean like too much it shouldn't be too much otherwise uh, it it will cover the whole scene with the light only let me just show you if you make it too much so it will make uh, white is with the light color and it will cover up the whole scene so that we don't want we have to place with the right intensity so that uh, it is visible so now let me show you about the light distribution light distribution type is right now uniform sphere spherical so it will uh, spread the light uniformly but in spherical form so there you can see that in the spherical form the light is being spread if you want to uh spread the light uniformly but without any shape so you will go for that uniform diffuse okay uniform diffuse you will choose uniform diffuse and you can also make spotlights so there are spotlights and for that you see now this distribution of this light is changed right now and uh, here you can create uh, the area for your hot spot your fall off so the inner circle is called hot spot and the outer circle is called fall off so the intensity within the hot spot area is the maximum and it start decaying till the fall off area so after the fall off area you will not see any light now let me just change the direction of this uh, spotlight so uh, here, here is what sorry the outer circle is for outer circle is the fall off area okay so uh, up to that area your light will fall and uh, the maximum intensity will be within the hot spot area so the inner circle is called the hot spot area and after that hot spot area your light will start decaying till the fall off area uh let me go for this so here you can see we have all the uh what light there so let me just go with this isolate selections so we have this right now we'll go for this and uh, here i must have one target option yeah so you make it targeted and then you select this one and then you can change the direction okay then you can change the direction like this all right so you have to make it targeted or else what you can do you can select it go for e and there it will not make any sense so you have to change the target direction and then you can make it untargeted or make it free again so let me go back and here you see so for this one you have to uh, change for all of this okay so the parameters are linked with this now uh, let me bring all of this back to photometric web we have uh, one kind of free light is there 
so it is like uh, more better uh, spreading light in this circular shape okay you can choose this uh, uniform diffuse So let me take this one and you can choose uniform diffuse or you can go for uniform spherical. OK, so the uniform spherical will. Uh, uh, what I say is spreading the light in spherical shape or in the spherical spherical form. All right. And now you see that emit light from shape. So this is right now as point. There you can change it to any other shape like line. So there you can see some uh, in the line shape. It is emitting the light. OK, so it's about the emitting shape. So you can go for rectangle. So what is our requirement right now? Now let me go to L and uh, we need to change this. So we will be changing it like this. OK. So let me align it. Just a second, guys. Give me a minute. Yeah, sorry guys. OK, let's continue now. So this, uh, this is fixed right now. You have to fix all of this like this way. OK. Adjusting yeah. the frame. Yeah, that uh, shape. I'm mm -hmm. adjusting that shape. Okay. So, like this, I'm adjusting this this shape there. And accordingly, I will get the result. OK. So let me just have it there. Yeah, like that. OK. So like this way you have to do all the things. So as per our design here, we have created the cavity for uh, the rectangular shape lights or here we can go for uh, like cylindrical shape like this. 
okay but we have to change the orientation there i have to change the orientation there okay so that we have to do we have to do all these changes and about the length and radius there you can change all the parameters there you can change for each shape you have and uh, you need to make this shape visible in the rendering so if you don't do that you will get the effect but the uh, you will get the light effect but this shape will not be visible there so let me show you there so let me focus on this there as because i have done uh, this shape properly so i have this render setup option f10 i have this one f10 and here i have this uh, active shade mode and i have uh, production rendering mode so this too is for uh, active shade mode when you go for final render when you fix the render uh, you don't need to change when you uh, finally making it uh, the production rendering mode is for your trial uh, for the view setup and trial and uh, for each and every moment you get the rendering so you go for production rendering there and uh, this is set to view so here you are getting it and you can click on render so it will create a render within this view just let me show you it's taking time it's processing Okay, so I have to change the shape uh, just about the length and uh, width. I have to change that. So let me select it and let me come to top view there. And uh, here, sorry, this one. Can you see this is this is the uh, right? So let me make it. Wireframe that is there, and let me go for E and let me change it. Okay, and about the length and about the width. Okay, so that is all right. So let me just come back to my perspective view there and uh, let me go to left there. So go for E and there. You do the changes. Okay, so this is how you have to set it. You have to align it properly. So it's a tedious task. You can go with the precision uh, angle value there so that you can set.
Okay, now let me come back to my perspective there. And uh, now let me go for render setup. And with this production rendering, let me go for render. Now there I can, uh, I hope you can see it. OK, now if I make any changes here. Can go for the rendering there. But each time it will take that much time, no? Yeah, it will take so. That's why I had shade uh, like. Let me go with this active shade mode. And here if you change anything, it will be reflected. So that is your active shade mode. OK. Uh, and that production rendering mode when you finalize. There you will go with this production rendering and when you are going with this uh, trial and error in each and every uh, changes you need to see it. So then you will go with this uh, active shade mode. OK, so about this light uh, you can create. OK, and then you will go for rendering. So I hope this is uh, about this light option, it is clear to you, right? And uh, here you can go for a uh, camera view that is set. This is the camera view and uh, setting this camera view. You will go for this render. So I will come up on this render part later. Uh, OK, uh, let let me explain here now. Uh, so uh, about the target. You know it and about the renderer. So what is the renderer? So if you go for art renderer and the scan line, so this is a type of renderer and according to that you will get your materials and uh, the quality of rendering you will get. So this is the default rendering option. Uh, this is the default renderer in uh, your latest version of 3ds Max. Uh, in the later version, you will find mental ray as a default renter uh, default renderer. OK. Uh, now about the common parameters, so. That is area to render that is view, so you can go for region. So like any particular region there, you can specify like this for this particular region. You will be. Uh, rendering this. So mostly you will go for view and you can go for any selected object like this or this only. You will be rendering so like that you have so. Choose view and what will be the output size like uh, when you render and you will save this render image. So for that render image, what is the output size so that you will be defining from here. You can go for custom and then you have to. Define manually. And about the image aspect and pixel aspect. And about the lighting, so that is advanced lighting is there. And uh, about the saving is saving the file, so you will click on here. And where you will be saving it, so 
so this is the default location uh, in the previous class yesterday i have uh, defined about this uh, location so this is the default one default location uh, so as per your project file location it is set okay so you can go for configure project path and there you can change the location and uh, after that you will be rendering it and you will be saving it to that location all right so this is very simple and uh, let me just render it now and there you can see and uh, for this render setup you have the shortcut that is your uh, f10 is the shortcut for your render setup so you press f10 and uh, So when you, when you want to stop your rendering, you click the cancel option and then uh, you, you go for any other task. So while the rendering is on, I suggest you that don't do any other task. It may lag or sometimes your system may hang also. So either you finish or you cancel, then move forward for uh, next step. So this is there and you will be saving it okay you can copy this image you can clone this render frame window and uh, this is right now set as production and uh, about the all the uh, uh, sizes so we have some file types so let me just uh, type let me just tell you about the, all the file types that is avi file so when you will be rendering your animation uh, your walkthrough so you will be saving it as a video format so you will be choosing that on that time you will be choosing it as a dot avi file okay and uh, you can uh, save it as a bitmaps for mapping you can save it as jpg png and all other image format targ of file tif these things are available okay so let me close it now. And now let me come to uh, for material part. So we have uh, our objects there. We have our objects there. So you can see all the materials there. Uh, some materials are there, but uh, how we can uh, define the material. So for that, we have this material editor window option is there. Material editor window is there. So here you will be creating uh, all your materials and then you will be applying to your model for your uh, realistic view and uh, getting your realistic model. So we have two modes that is one is uh, compact mode and another one is slate material editor mode so this slate material editor mode is more advanced and here you can play with uh, your materials and creating a uh, fusion of materials so for that let me uh, show you that in this materials option we have this physical blend so th these are different different type of materials so let me go with this physical material there and uh, you select this physical material here so this is uh, for viewing you all your materials there okay and uh, here you can see this is uh, material from here you can apply and you can so here we have some options okay and uh, for this tool you can uh, see the navigator so navigator just only focus on this uh, this viewing area and uh, as per that it will only show you the navigation only and uh, here if you have created any other view so you can choose from the list 
let me just close this one and from this list also you can uh, you can change the materials uh, the property from from this parameter list okay for this physical material so let me just uh, apply some materials so for this uh, this we can here apply map images we can apply so for map you have this bitmap option like this bitmap you place this bitmap so you place this bitmap you tag with the base color map okay so here we don't have any map so right now i need to uh, place so when you select come to this bitmap and there let me go for this pc and let me just check where i have saved it so so for that table we are going to create the material right so let me choose this dark wood texture and let me go with this open and that is applied here okay so here you can see this images uh, this image is loaded right now. So for this image, you have this uh, option, these options uh, available and about placing all this material uh, tiling and all. So in AutoCAD, you have seen the tiling option. So that is the same thing. So how it will be covering all the area when you will be applying on your model. So how you can apply. So this is the output node. It's kind of like a uh, like dynamo, right? So you can uh, connect this to your material over there. So just a second. Uh, so. OK, so here let me select this one. All right, let me apply on this. And it's asking you to assign to selection for the total selection or you can uh, if you go for assign to object. So that means for this object where you have hovered your mouse. So you can go for that. So let me go to this assigned to selection. So for this total selection, it is applied, right? So you can uh, go to this bitmap again, select this bitmap, and there if you need to change any uh, properties, like if I go for this one, and now again, you have to go for this selection, and for this tile so let me change this tiling there i hope uh, you can see the changes all right so you can uh, do these changes there make the changes so this how you can uh, apply your materials you can create your materials now let me select this physical material there and uh, now you can see this uh, there is one aim symbol is there so that means this bitmap is uh, attached so when i uh, attach this or uh, detach this uh, detach this map from this base color map here you cannot see this that aim symbol so from here also you can apply that and here you can uh, fuse another color over there so if you go for any particular color so like this if you go for like this color and uh, here you have to 
do the changes for that. So. This is the color and. Uh, So this is uh, OK. So that is uh, said with that. OK. Uh, let me just apply it again. And uh, so this is overriding it. OK. Uh, so here I'm not getting any changes. OK, so the color is uh, right now not applied here. OK, uh, so it's uh, overriding the color. The map is overriding the color, so. No worry about that. And uh, now let me show you about the roughness so we can add roughness or glossiness there. And uh, if you are creating metal uh, properties, so metalness you can add about the transparency about uh, surface scattering so about the emission with the color with the texture no like it should have this one skin, no? this one uh, yeah uh, but here uh, the uh, image is overriding uh, the whole thing okay. so about the color you can can apply this color only if you if you are going with that you can apply the color only so uh, here let me just go with this base color so as for this uh, map we are getting it and uh, more than that okay so let's go with that uh, we can assign more map for each and everything. We can uh, change the roughness value. Or if we go with roughness value less, so it will make more smooth. So we can create objects like this. We can uh, go for this. So we have. Uh, all the list for our scene materials there. So this is the list for your scene materials. So all these uh, materials are uh, applied within the scene. So you have to know that these these are ap all applied within within this scene. So you can check this list. So to identify which are the materials uh, applied here. OK, so this is the name for like material 47 so here you can come and here you can see material 47 is here so now if i uh, select and delete from this uh, this so even if i have deleted this this is still applied and in this scene materials you can see so it doesn't mean that uh, if you are getting this uh, material within this view uh, window that that is uh, that doesn't mean that uh, it is applied. It can be placed within this view tab and still not applied. And if it is not there, you can bring back from the scene materials. So you have to click and drag it here and then you go for this instance. And if you want to make a duplicate, but uh, the separate one and you want to change the uh, parameters and you want to create a separate uh, with diff different properties so you can go with a copy let me go with that instance 
and that is the one. So here you can see. All right, so we can create different kind of materials here. So all the options are available here. So like if you want to, so this is one physical material. You can create more physical material and attach all the maps. So if you go with blend, so there you can find out two materials are there and two materials are attached with this physical materials. So this kind of physical material you can create for this physical material and this physical material attaching all the maps and that will be fused within this particular material. So two, uh, two material will become one single material. You can uh, mix two different materials for this. So this this is very easy. So when you know how to create one physical material, so you know how to create uh, to different physical material and then you just connect it to material one and material two and then output you go for it and here you have this show shaded material in viewport so if this is uh, unchecked so this will not uh, your material will not be visible so here you have to check this option in the default condition it is uh, generally checked so you even up after applying your material you can't see it so just understand that this one is unchecked OK, and uh, this is the background preview. OK. That's it. And uh, you have some other options like multi sub object within a single material. Uh, uh, sorry, within a single model, you can apply different different more uh, different different materials uh, on different different surfaces. So for that uh, you can convert like uh, this if you convert to let me go with this modifier list and here if you convert it to editable poly, it is converted to editable poly. OK, so let me go with the poly select and uh, there let me go with this. And there you can see this is the ID for this face. So for all this face, this is the ID. OK, so. Right click. Convert to editable poly. Why is it not being? Uh, is it group? Yeah, is it a group? Yeah. Yeah, so this is editable poly. This is editable poly. OK, so this is editable poly right now. So let me just apply on this part. Uh, let me select it. For this one, let me check the set ID. So this is the one. The whole material. Let it. Let me check it. So this is uh, set ID one. This all the set ID is one. No problem. Let me just 
hit uh, another one or let me create another box here okay some boxes here and now let me go for convert to editable poly this option and uh, now let me change the color and uh, let me go with this one and here if i select it and uh, there you can see this is the set id 3 this is set id 5 this is set id 1 okay so 135 is there so like this uh, for each and uh, every face there is a set id so this is material ids and here you can apply uh, all the materials there so let me go with this uh, bitmap. You can go for bitmap and uh, can attach to it. So let me go for materials. So let me apply this material. And let me click on it here and uh, there you can. There you can directly go for it. There you can go for one physical material there. So on physical material is there for this. And then you can go for this base color map there. And right now this is checked. And you can minimize this one. And uh, let me just copy this. OK, let me just copy this bitmap. And uh, let me change the image. There, let me change this image and let me bring back this physical material. So, let me copy this physical material and uh, it will not be attached. Sorry. to connect the bitmap to this material no then it will automatically yeah. so we have to create one physical material like physical material is there and then you have to check this base color map and then you have to connect this to this okay for all this multi sub object you will be attaching it and uh, for this five, let me create like that. So let me have another physical material there and let me duplicate this here and let me change the material. OK, so let me connect this to base color map and now let me connect to this. Five. And here I have done it and now let me connect to this box there. OK, there you can see that is applied.
So about those two map, we have to change. Properties we have to change here. Uh, so that is applied for three. So this is four. This is five. This is three. So there it is applied. So let me choose this bitmap. And here let me go for it. It should have shown something. Yeah, right. Uh, it should be showing it. Uh, okay, let me just uh, render it. Here in the rendering, let me see if I can get it in the render. OK, so these files are missing right now. OK, somehow these files got missed in. OK, uh, so I have to change this bitmap. Uh, there, let me change this. Let me apply this one and Holding the shift, I'll make it duplicate, and for this, I'll be changing it to this. Let me apply. Okay, let me select this, and for this, let me apply it. Uh, There, uh, I can see override uh, option. So that we don't have to select. Which one? Uh, in the previous box, when you were selecting the material, there it was automatic and override. Not here. When you were select uh, taking the material from the library from your uh, file. Uh, now can you see it? Uh, which one? Uh, I'm not getting you. When you are selecting the material from your file from the folder outside. Yeah. This one. Yeah. So there we have automatic and override. Yeah. So, so you can go for this override. Uh, override is. So this is a uh, one. Uh, uh like gamma radiation kind of thing so it will uh, override to that color or to that material so I think it's been by, uh, uh, yeah this is uh, for the appearance so i don't have uh, that much of idea about this this option i thought it was related uh, yeah they, that is that is uh, for uh, your bitmap image so for this mapping, you have this option to overriding some effect like this. OK, so this how you can uh, create multi sub objects and you can apply to different different phase of your object. All right. So this is how we will be applying materials in into our scene. Now let me just show you another thing. That is here we have one uh, option that is called viewport background. So your viewport background, uh, if if it is solid color, so you can apply any solid color there. 
okay uh, so generally we will make it to viewport background so we will go for view uh, sorry in environment background and uh, then you will be applying environment so 8 is the shortcut for uh, adding environment so you go for environment so go for hdri environment double click on it and uh, so let me choose from that so i have this background you can open for it so there you can see right the background that is added right now and uh, the camera preview there you can see right so let me change it to the camera there you can see background now what we can do is we can off any light of this light so we can create our daylight scene so let me choose this background and here let me go for the render let me see Okay, so uh, as per the scene light, we are getting some uh, lights over there. Okay, so as per that environment background, we are getting some lights. So there you can uh, see that is right now user defined. Here you can go for high quality. Okay, so as per that, uh, we have some settings. So light and shadow. So these settings are there. So th there you can see this. illuminate with scene light so that means uh, as per the scene your background uh, it's illuminating light okay and uh, you have this progressive skylight shadows and ambient so these options are there so you need shadows you have to check this and progressive skylight means uh, when you move uh, within this scene when you move so your uh, direction of light will change so as per that you will get all right so these are the settings you will go that and you can here also you can go for rendering within this view you can render it so some uh, files are missing over here okay so here you can go for the rendering also that you can see right let me go for alt w there continue here okay so let me change it to physical uh, perspective view let me place and here let me uh, change it yeah so here you can see right we have this one and uh, your image is placed like a panorama there and uh, now we have another option for placing your daylight so you will come to this uh, system option and here you will find daylight option and uh, you are creating daylight so you need to control the exposure so you will go with that es option and uh, all the lights are turned off and now you are placing with this daylight option and uh, how you want to control the parameter so if you go with the manual so manually you will be changing uh, you can fix the date and time and location as per that you will uh, get uh, the effect so let me go with this manual and then w and there you can change this lights and all there you can change it okay and uh, again come to modifier and then these are the daylight parameters so sunlight is active skylight is active so you can uncheck this skylight over there so these are the settings you are getting it so light type is on and uh, you can make it uh, off again all right so shadows is on 
and about the intensity. So there you can uh, multiply the intensity. So let me just uh, check. First, let me check it. So right now this is uh, sunlight that that is set. So this is the sun that is selected. And here let me go for physical camera and there you can see we are getting more light, right? And let me go for this render. And let me so we are missing uh, some uh, images there, so we have to fix this. OK, so these are changed right now, so we have to browse them and uh, bring them back. So this missing map files, uh, you need to solve this. OK, and this render message will be solved. So. Yeah, so after this you can go for production render mode there. And uh, here you have this uh, for Arnold render there you have this option, all these things you have. OK. These are the common parameters, so you will be uh, choosing the single and there you go for render. Continue. Here close. Continue close. So you need to solve those errors. You need to uh, bring those files back. And after that, you will go for this production rendering mode. OK, so this is how you can create your uh, day scene. Uh, you create your uh, night scene with artificial lights. OK, I hope uh, you got the basic idea about the material and uh, placing your lights and rendering it. Do practice it. Tomorrow I may take an uh, exam for your 3ds Max. It will be uh, on spot exam. Yeah, I, I will give you file and within a particular time you have to submit it. Okay, okay then. Did you? Good night. Hearing, no? Like Sorry? I'm really in the doubt, no? About that pillow or something. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Try again. No, Have you uploaded it? No, no, I, I didn't move out of the uh, uh, of the class, so I will be there. But I'll, I can share the screen with you. You upload from the time that you need. I'll just try it once and then I will upload it. Okay, no problem. Fine.